Answers is one of the longest running songs to exist in Final Fantasy XIV. I also feel that it is one of the most important. For years, people have wondered what Answers really is all about. And while I think, ultimately, it is a simple song about finding your path forward and living your best life, regardless of suffering and pain, let's go a little deeper, shall we? Answers may be the single most important piece of music to exist in Final Fantasy XIV. And sure, while it appears in opening cutscenes to Final Fantasy XIV 1.0, we're gonna start here. The beginning of the end. The seventh umbral calamity. The day the moon brought forth by the Garleans finally entered close enough for players to realize this was in fact the calamity they feared. The day they'd fight with honor as warriors of light to protect the world they had come to love as their own. Rolling thunder, flashes of lightning, painful farewells, answers playing in the distance, Susan Calloway's voice echoing throughout the realm. And then this. Answers has been with us since the beginning. We can't just talk about Answers casually. Answers is us. Answers is theirs. Answers is Final Fantasy XIV. As we watch Dalamud emerge from the sky, holding Bahamut, fireballs and debris wreak havoc on Eorzea. We hear these lyrics sung by a choir of men. Why? Why must we suffer? For years, players have wondered what these lyrics meant. Who were the people saying these words? Were they the people of Eorzea crying out, please, please help us, calling out from below as they met their demise? Who does this solo soprano signify to all of my children for whom life flows abundant, 
Who is this celestial being speaking to us? What's astounding about this is that all we have here is a single harp. Broom, boom, boom, boom. Broom, boom, boom, boom. There is a purity. There is a gentility amongst this chaos. There is a voice that echoes throughout the land. What does this voice represent? What is the meaning of this? And why do we choose to have a single instrument accompanying a solo soprano? Usually when we hear this in music, there is a religious or holy aspect to this. Something larger than us that guides us, watches over us, protects us. It's deceptively simple. Single plucked notes with a singer over top. In a way, it feels like this warm embrace. But we understand and we know that things are about to shift as Bahamut emerges from his prison that he's been in for millennia. Now we have a shift musically. As Bahamut emerges from his prison, the music suddenly shifts to a rock ballad with drums and electric guitar as our heroes watch helplessly as Bahamut rages through Eorzea. Bahamut's imposing rage signified by the drums and the electric guitar. At the same time, we have the chorus shouting, suffer, promise, witness, reason. Why? Why? Why is this happening? Why is our life meant for this? What have we done to deserve this? Is this what our life is all about? And we also have Susan Calloway singing, now in this belted range, signifying this outcry of suffering and pain as destruction and fire rain across the land. Suddenly saved by Louis Soi, mired by a plague of doubt, the land she mourns, tell us why, given life, we are meant to die, helpless in our cries. Suddenly, the music turns hopeful. We hear strength because while we may not know it, Louis Soi, our only hope, tasked the people of the land to pray at specific locations he had marked with the symbol of the Twelve, with the intent to gather as much aether as possible through his staff, Tupsamadi, with the intent of summoning the primal incarnations of the Twelve. This hope is reflected in the music when Calloway sings, helpless in our cries. That mass of aether was supposed to contain Bahamut. Which is why when we suddenly realize the cocoon of light didn't work to suppress and lock away Bahamut, the music goes still. 
Instead, we have this unison chant. In one fleeting moment from the land doth life flow, yet in one fleeting moment for a new doth grow, and the same fleeting moment thou must live, die, and know. Stillness. As Louis Swa sacrifices his life, turning into the phoenix, piercing Bahamut, and falling into the ground with Dalamut. So, where does this leave us? We hear answers a few more times in the binding coils of Bahamut as we explore and uncover the story of what happened once we were teleported to safety and Dalamut collapsed to the ground. Answers appear several times in A Realm Reborn, and then Stormblood, then goes quiet a bit. That is, of course, until we meet Heidelin herself, Fanat. As we put the pieces together, it begins to make sense. We understand that the Calamities were attempts by the Asians to rejoin their home and to bring back the world to what it once was before Heidelin sundered it, splitting it into 13 shards. But before we dive into that more, let's come face to face with Heidelin and hear your answer. By now, we understand that Vinat was a ferocious and powerful warrior, and at this moment, we are tasked with proving our worth at being able to defeat Medion, us, the last hope for civilization, by Heidelin. This is why your answer opens with this powerful brass section. We also hear the harp, referencing loosely the crystal theme that we have come to know and understand to be synonymous with the Final Fantasy series. I also think that this peaceful harp also reflects the love that Heidelin has shown us this entire time, protecting us and guiding us. So yes, while we are being faced and challenged and having to confront Heidelin with the chance of our own death and destruction, we also understand that this challenge comes from a place of love with that harp. What's fascinating here is this march-like forward momentum propulsion that we have to this theme that we previously have heard with so much passion and soulfulness. Now, to be turned into this battle to the death with the source itself, I find it interesting that in the corner where the lyrics say, tell us why, given life, we are meant to die, helpless in our cries, that we saw earlier with Louis Swad, now it's strings that are present. The music shifts to this gentle string section that, uh, that ascends. It's an interesting comparison that when we were discussing death earlier in lyrics, the music would shift to strings and be much more introspective. <laughs> Thank you. 
Here, the only vocals we hear are really the crux of the whole message of Answers itself. Witness, feel, suffer, think, borrow, teach, reason, hear, follow, feel, stumble, think, wander, teach, listen, blink, answer, look, answer, think, answer together. This is our purpose. This is our meaning. This is our answer. What were we put here to do? To do these very things. To witness the world. To feel the world. To suffer the world. To think. To teach. To reason. To feel. To stumble. Subliminally, through the music, we are given the answer to the answer. Our purpose on this world is to suffer, is to hope for tomorrow, to be here in this fleeting moment, because it does grow anew. And yes, in the same fleeting moment, while we must live, we must also die and know that that is our purpose, to live our life, to bear rapture and to sorrow. I think that Vinat's promise, and the reason why I'm putting it after your answer, which I know that in the game comes before, is the fact that I think that the final days tie into the calamity of 1.0 and to the beginning of A Realm Reborn in a really beautiful way. And I think ultimately, Vinat's promise is the answer to the answer. Even now, I remember standing there, locked in a moment where the sky is aflame. Suddenly we're thrust right back to the very end of a Final Fantasy XIV's life. To the very end of everything we knew as players before A Realm Reborn. We see and understand that what has occurred to us at the end of 1.0 and at the beginning of ARR, that is a cycle a cycle that never ends because of what's occurring here right now. And musically, it mirrors that. Where stars fall as tears and screams darken the seas. Where resignation rots the trees. Where terror twists magics into abominations. Such is the lament of they who have gone before. The song of they who tried and failed to create a better world. The song of the end. which hides at the edge of the universe is no longer hope's creation. It is hopelessness incarnate. That day, mankind saw half of its number sacrificed to bring forth Zodiac. And covering the star in a shroud of ether, we forestalled the final days. We hear answers in a really different way now, knowing full well that the choir we heard, that is the choir of ancients during the final day, shouting out, begging for Zodiac to bring back their perfect utopia, to protect them, to guide them, to guard them, knowing that half of their population was to be sacrificed so that Zodiac could continue to shroud the planet in a shield of Aether. Why must they suffer? Why must this occur to them?
yet the cries echoed still. We wept for innocence lost, wailed for death inevitable. A reality too terrible to bear. And for too many, who sought comfort in gilded memories of joyful days and tranquil nights. This is all wrong! Why must we suffer so? It needn't be like this. No! There must be a way to restore things to the way they were. To reclaim the perfect paradise we once had. No, my friends. Suffering exists. And we cannot pretend otherwise. No civilization, however great, could eliminate it. If we would live, we must accept it as our constant companion. Let us not seek to forget this tragedy. Let us carry it in our hearts, that we may grow stronger and know true happiness. When Vinok comes upon these ancients that are begging for the world to return back to their utopia, to what they know, the music shifts here to From the Ashes. We can't accept it. We won't accept it. It will be ours again. A world free of sorrow! No, it will not. For there has ever been sorrow. Mankind was but spared its biting sting for a time. So please, open your eyes to try and reclaim those lives we lost by sacrificing yet more isn't wisdom, it is weakness. No paradise is without its shadows. If we cannot accept this truth and learn from our pain, then our plight shall be repeated. Zodiac, God born of our boundless faith, we bid you hear our prayer. Accept this offering of lives and deliver unto us the lives we once had. Deliver unto us the days of old, the days when the star was a font of love and we knew naught but bliss. You would destroy it? Our beautiful world? Lands that stretched on forever, skies one could drown in, the heartbeat of nature, silent yet strong. And amidst it all, a people, beacons of light and life, laughter that warmed my heart like naught else before. They are my meaning, and my purpose, my love. In spite of, or perhaps because of this, I choose to believe in mankind's potential, in his ability to find a way forward. So let there be no way back. From that temptation, 
I sunder us. No more shall man have wings to bear him to paradise. Henceforth, he shall walk. We have a shift here. Things have completely changed. In sundering the world and splitting it into 13, Vinod put her faith in the future that we as a people would discover the way forward. By removing us from paradise, we would find a way to correct the wrongs, to fight with hope, to reverse the final days, and bring balance to the world. I find it interesting that the juxtaposition here, we have this, the Susan Calloway version of answers, and then we have from the ashes. We hear the ancients begging. We hear their plight. We hear their fear. We hear their unwillingness to listen to Vinod when she says that we cannot go back, yet they refuse, marred by and, 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 and blurred by what's to come with this fear of, of, of the future of going back to what they had, but it's impossible. All is excruciating pain. I breathe fire and torment. I birth a world of suffering to mire and plague. In one fleeting moment, lives come and go, ever moving towards the unknown. And in that fleeting moment, they cry for the answer to the question. Why, given life, are they meant to suffer, to die? As fragmented, imperfect beings, yours is a never-ending quest. A quest to find your purpose, knowing your end is assured. To find the strength to continue when all strength has left you. To find joy, even as darkness descends. And amidst deepest despair, light everlasting. Vinat says, a quest to find your purpose, knowing your end is assured, to find the strength to continue when all strength has left you, to find joy even as darkness descends, and amidst deepest despair, light everlasting. We end this final listen to answers with thou must live, die, and know. That, that is the answer. This song has transcended the spirits of millions of players all over the world. 
We've known this song for years, years. Yet now we know the true depth of what this song is and means. I'm sure no one would have guessed how profound this song would become as time went on. A ravishing look at how we can best live our lives and perhaps in the process, save ourselves and others. Find the strength to continue when all strength has left you. Find joy, even as darkness descends. And amidst deepest despair, light everlasting. <laughs>